Good morning. First message this morning is we call on all North Carolinians to vote, to vote, to vote. Uh, during this last few days of early voting into Saturday and then on November the 8th, do not allow anything to deter you from voting. But that's also why we're here today. Ever since, for the last three years, we've been fighting voter suppression in North Carolina like we have not seen since the days of Jim Crow. Voter fraud is a lie, but voter suppression is alive and well. We won in August. The federal courts agreed with us that House Bill 589 that was passed by the legislature, the Republicans in the legislature, and signed by Governor McCrory and endorsed by Donald Trump, they said that that law was surgical discrimination and racism. It was unconstitutional at the highest levels. It violated the most fundamental principles of the Constitution. Almost immediately after winning a three-year battle against more than $6 million spent by the state of North Carolina of our tax dollars, the Republican Party executed a memo to local boards of election that they control by virtue of the governor being a Republican. And they instructed those boards of elections to put in place and to enforce rules that lined up with Republican values as opposed to the spirit of the law and the values that were outlined, are outlined by the Constitution and by our court victory. Not many days ago, we began to get reports. We have three counties that we'll talk about this morning, but we're not, we don't know the depth of all of this, where persons connected to the Republican Party were engaging in an attempt to get voters purged, especially African Americans. One county over 100, another county over 400, and one county over 3,500 persons. In Beaufort County, one lady that they sought to purge was over 100 years old. They're attempting to use a scheme related to returned mail in order to push people away from the poll and to create and generate fear in the community. This is unconstitutional. It is unjust. It is sinister. And it is shameful. And we are here to fight because we want to see all North Carolinians vote. Their actions, if we did not challenge them in court, would, we, would affect thousands of people, and already thousands. And it even gets worse because these local boards are talking about having hearings all the way up until November the 7th on whether or not duly eligible voters are eligible. Now, they are in direct violation of the National Voter Registration Act, which says that this kind of action, these kind of purging, is unconstitutional. Our lawyers, led this morning by Herb John and Pinder Hare and Caitlin Swain, we have filed this case and the, and the federal courts gave us an emergency hearing on this morning. I do want to announce that just this morning, the United States Department of Justice actually get, rendered and sent forth a statement of interest from the United States. The United States, it says, has a substantial interest in ensuring that the National Voting Rights Act is properly interpreted and uniformly enforced around the country. And in this statement of interest, they are standing with us and saying that our lawyers have properly interpreted the Constitution and properly con interpreted the National Voting Rights Act, which means, which would mean, if the court agrees, that these boards of election and the state board of election is out of compliance and engaging in unconstitutional activity across North Carolina for allowing these challenges to go forth. Let me read one statement about the NR, NVRA. Congress passed the NVRA to establish procedures 
that will increase the number of eligible citizens who register to vote in elections for federal offices and to ensure that accurate and current voter registration rolls are maintained. The, the State Board of Election in North Carolina is allowing activity to go on that's in direct violation of the National Voting Rights Act. Every North Carolinian should be angered by this kind of activity, should be disturbed by this kind of activity. In the middle, at the end of an election, individuals, primarily African Americans, are being targeted to be removed from the rolls. The ugly irony of it is, when we started our fight against voter suppression in 2013, right after the Shelby decision, our lead plaintiff was Ms. Rosanelle Eaton, who was over 90 years old. She's 95 now, she makes sure I know that. Now we have a plaintiff, Ms. Grace Harrison, who's over 100 years old, along with thousands of others. We are fighting this. We believe and we hope that the courts will agree with us and we will have an immediate temporary restraining order and these persons will in fact be allowed to vote freely and exercise the franchise. We have to fight this. It is unjust, it is immoral, it is sinister, and it is shameful to engage in this kind of voter suppression. Er We're going to be leaving now. We have to go uh, upstairs for this hearing. Uh, we uh, have a very strong case uh, that will be uh, presented to the uh, judge. Uh, we have the uh, support of the uh, Department of Justice uh, with their uh, statement of, uh, of interest. We have uh, a, the law that is on our side, and uh, so we now uh, enter the courthouse to uh, deal with the judge to help her to understand exactly what the law is so that we can restrain the state from suppressing the rights of uh, these duly elected uh, individuals to vote. So thank you very much. Your name, thank sir? Herb Joyner. Thank you all so much. Take care.